Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Light Campaign V4.1 and uh, I'm just going to do a quick test run because well it's still being developed until at least Monday and there are a lot of quirks in there still that need to be ironed out. Not all of them are of course going to be uh, uh, dealt with until Monday or until and including Monday. Um, but we are going to get into a... Oh, it's already in a state where it's quite playable, I think. So um, let's start a new game. And what I'm going to try out here is see what uh, you can do for an extreme start. As in you basically have only a piece of land. We tried that for the 4.0 version as well. And the um, quite prohibitive factory costs and tooling costs were getting in your way with that and it was quite challenging although the plots were also very valuable at that point now lots of that has changed and we're going to take a look at it ignore the score multiplier there that is uh, a little odd still so we're going to start with zero starting cash and just two medium plots, but no factories. Supposedly a score multiplier of 66. Uh, mm, some, something wrong in there. But uh, yeah, Gazmir is the start. Sounds good to me. Just vanilla apart from that. Uh, no other changes. So let's get this one rolling. And I'm going to start out by having a car generated for the luxury premium market. And then just going to edit it. Oh, it even generated a pretty good one. 82, not too far off. Uh, one thing to note here is that our company valuation is just 12.3 million. Plots are now much more realistic in price as are factory costs. I've done some research into this topic and found some reasonable values and um, conveniently so for 2012 because that is our kind of calibration year. Oh, it is scoring that highly despite it picking this body which has no cabin volume whatsoever uh, this is ridiculous like this one is outright broken and this one is well kind of broken too um, this car w should have in reality about four cubic meters I would think that is roughly where you would expect these cars to be uh, three and a half to four cubic meters of cabin space and cargo volume uh, around uh, this is a big car so I would assume something like 400 liters uh, this, by the way, is something that I've been working on as well, and this is not implemented yet. I hope we can do that during the open beta phase. Uh, getting rid of the actual boxes for the cabin and the uh, cargo, um, because if we do, then that means that we can deal with any car in a consistent way, uh, which currently the game does not. Look at this one, for instance, the 1941. That is... Still wrong, but much more reasonable at 1,800. Oh, that would also mean that all mod bodies don't, like, modders wouldn't have to place those boxes. So it can't go wrong. Uh, so mod bodies would be playing balanced in the game then as well. So I'm going to switch back to ladder and steel. And why am I doing this? Well, simple reason is these are kind of, can be handmade in a shed just need to weld them together and so the same goes for aluminium but you don't weld them together you hammer it into place so that's all good um and double wishbone double wishbone yeah i think so what kind of engine did it make uh a uh, v8 5.2 liters 5.2 liters does sound reasonable so let's stick with that and need clean numbers 94 94 that's nice this one will produce way too much power. Let's give it push rods. And how do you kill power? Well, single barrel eco carbs for sure. Uh, also takes out any kind of punch it had. Uh, do we want to have a little bit more? 13? Yeah, probably not too bad. 13 sounds reasonable. Uh, and we do have a decent fuel mixture there. Let's lower this to be peaking way earlier as well. And then we don't need nearly as many revs. This is looking good. Double baffled, for sure, yes, and nowhere near as much power. Let's make a diesel. Um, there we go. This is knocking. That's not a problem. So we can always back off. 105 with peak <laughs> peak torque at 1,200 RPM. Yeah, just above idle. Perfect. 
Oh yeah, let's take a look at this here. It's still not fully fleshed out, as there's no way to uh, load specific paints or something. Um, but this is supposedly working a little better now. It doesn't select a default option here, but now they have proper names. So this is the classic, almost. This is the basic. All right, let's use the classic and then uh, just to choose valve cover, let's let's make it blue because uh, it's very premium. There we go. Isn't that fancy? What I really like to see here would be that you just can drag and drop them there. That would be super handy. Well, this doesn't accept the intake manifolds yet. It doesn't seem to be hooked up just yet. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Let's give it some more tire width just to get rid of a reasonable amount of wheel spin. These guys don't really care about cost that much, so we could be using non-square setups, but uh, I don't need to, it seems. This is very close to optimal drivable. Now, this is also something that I need to change. Uh, if you are beyond 80 meters in brake distance from 100 to 0, then score isn't any more affected by uh, having longer brake distances so I would be able to pull down the pads to ridiculous numbers and it would just increase here. Um, nah, not, not only, I mean it's now below the mark where uh, drivability is optimal so uh, yes but still yeah, comfort will increase. Um, 92, yeah they don't care at this point so I think I'm going to extend this to 100 meters instead uh, so that the mapping is more relevant to the range you would have at the start of the game. Okay, yeah, um, seats got reset, that's why it's sucky now. Okay, four seats, perfect. Um, that's looking good. And I think we even want to use an uptick here, although I'm going to hold back on that. This is going to cause some additional engineering time that we don't want right now, but for the first facelift, I certainly would want to increase this one. And here we start out with a plus three, I believe. Yeah, that is uh, solid. Makes this beast of a car more steerable. Suspension all set up. This is looking very comfortable indeed. And here we have a bit of a problem still. These cars are considered like super unaffordable if you're starting with no factories whatsoever. I don't think it knows what to calculate with for the price at the moment. Which is why this one is uh, seen as not even affordable by luxury car buyers. That is not quite true though. So I'm going to... Um, and no, not the Canadian Prime. Um, the, the luxury premium build here that I did was probably around 25k in production cost. And if we just do a drop down here we see that budgets... Yeah, they can afford 37k if we wanted to. That would be giving you 50% affordability in luxury. I've now named the car trims and the engine appropriately so that we can keep track of them. And this one I'm going to turn into a convertible version. I'm going to start and try to go wide right from the get-go just so that we're covering more markets and get more of a company bubble. And that is something that we're going to see in a little bit. So the trim body is that one that we're going to choose. Soft top. And that also means that we need to choose um, some convertible options. Because that is the only thing that is going to be different about this one. So, yeah, convertible. Uh, the premium version here, not really a thing. Um, four seats there. We do have detachable soft top. Not really that prestigious, is it? But a manual soft top is uh, not too bad. So you see there's some stat differences in here. And we unfortunately can't really see it in here. Although you can check out the desirability number there. It's 664. And if we go for the detachable one, it is 606. So 10% difference, which is massive. But um, also this one, of course, is quite a bit more expensive. So for all that mechanism stuff in there. Uh, yeah, quite the upgrade. But most importantly, that one is giving us way more prestige 
than the detachable soft top, which is garbage tier in that regard. It's just a canvas above the roof, after all, on the frame. So, yep, yeah, uh, well, the manual one is too, but at least you can, you can, um, like, fold it back properly. And this is all fine. We're going to use the same settings. Let's just double check. Uh, this is on the ladder frame, which means that the convertible shouldn't be much heavier. And, yeah, it, it isn't, it seems. That's good. Um... Otherwise, it seems fine. Still good drivability. And it's just the affordability that is quirky here at the moment. So uh, let's head over to the factory to sort that out. So this is looking good. Head over to the factory panel. And medium. We have a medium plot. And factory size is nothing at the moment because we don't have a factory on there. So what I'm going to try out here is the, the smallest, lowest budget start possible. So a uh, tiny factory is what we are going to try and run. And that is basically a shed, as you can see there. A little bit more than that, but uh, still, this is a, a really tiny factory. And now take a look at that. How much does it cost? Well, to build it, it's just 2.8 million. That's not much. Uh, tooling costs 85,000. <laughs> yeah, there's not much going into building ladder frames and hand hammered aluminium. You just need the the shapes of the body uh, in wood, carved in wood, and then you put the aluminium sheets on top and you hammer it into shape. So uh, that's how that goes. We're going to build both cars. Uh, they're currently only taking 160 production units, which should probably be quite a bit more, but that is something that we need to balance in 4.2, I believe, uh, where all those things need to be revamped. Uh, yes, so here we are, setting up the factory. The um, automation level of the... the base automation level of the factories has been changed. Uh, it has been tweaked down, so... A tiny factory is now way lower, like a factor three lower than it was before, and that means that even um, even though it is that low, you can run reasonable values on the automation slider um, because, well, that is just affecting it around its base value, and you um, no longer have to pull it down to make it super. Well, oh, not super efficient, but more efficient. As you can see here, efficiency 50-something percent. It rises something there. 52.5 is the maximum we reach. And that is, yeah, staff, about 100 people working there. Seems reasonable enough. Uh, average wage probably should be a little higher than that. Um, given that these are some proper craftsmen you need. And we're going to put some decent quality control into it. And let's go with 90%. Tooling quality. Okay. Now, tooling just costs us 100,000. We have zero cash, of course, but 12.3 uh, million in company valuation. So I think we can up this quite a bit and thus gain more build quality, which will be important to uh, the start of our company. So slowdown is also reduced 21. We are going to be able to build 29 cars of each one per month. This is at even split of production units. So just under 60 cars. Seems fine. And that is at... I don't know. What shift shift level is that at? at? Two shifts? Or I think it's three. No, no, it is actually two. It says it right there. Number of shifts, two. And we produce 58.2 cars. One thing you probably didn't quite notice, or maybe you did, is the cost per production unit. That is way, way lower than it was. The tiny factories in Gazmir, I think before was around like 70 to 80 bucks per production unit, which made it super tough to be anywhere competitive enough uh, to compete. So right now it looks pretty good. Production cost per car is 5,000 bucks. That is labor cost only. Um, material cost goes on top of that, which was around 9,500, I believe. So you're making pretty cheap cars in here. But now we need to pull down that tooling slider. And we are going to see here this is labor cost. Um, 5,000 as we said before. And 8.8 uh, thousand for this one. And a little higher for 
that one. Well, this is the average. Because of its production flags, the optimal tooling optimization level, as you see there, is uh, very low. 67, it flattens out there and then drops from there. But you still make more cars, increasing it. Um, it does increase the costs, though, by quite the amount. So the optimal seems to be around 5.09k, 5.09k here. 57.3%, uh, 58 cars, 44. That is not good enough, though. That is way too much, so let's pull it down a little. We want it to be in the range of, like, two years. That is with the three years reduction of engineering time. I also would like to pull down the funding a little, because this is expensive. We don't have that much money. So let's go like this and up the pressure. And how much pressure do we have to up? Uh, mm, I mean, we could go for 25 instead. I mean, one month doesn't hurt you that bad. It's an opportunity cost of one month. That's 55 cars. It's not the world. Now, of course, we have the, the issue of the engine factory. So let's take a quick look. We do have the plot, um, but there are only existing small engine factories because the minimum you need is a small factory in order to be able to place an add-on. And that add-on is the iron foundry, which costs you 30 million. Well, that doesn't seem to be feasible in our case. Also, it would way overproduce engines. So um, how about no? So what I'm going to do here is to just deactivate this one and start an engine contract instead. Let's work out of Gazmir. Contract work costs you nothing. As in, the plot costs don't cost you anything. Uh, iron Foundry, and then... Um, well, this also doesn't cost us anything, because they have it already. Uh, this is fine for the build time, for the preparation time. And now, let's see... That is expensive. But, yeah, and producing way more engines than we need. So, overall, we are going to produce each engine for around 3.5k. That's not too bad. So now for the engineering, we also do want to pull that into 25 months, just to be synchronized. Oh yeah, that's pretty easy. Um, let's go with a little bit more and then lower funding. Don't want to spend it all there. Okay, 3.2 million, sounds good. And yes, so we are all set up. 25, 14, and engine costs. Ooh, okay, yeah, that's pretty expensive. Uh, oh, why, why is the build quality icon there? Uh, yeah, some smaller issues that need to be sorted out. Um, but that is polishing work, basically. It's still playable. It just isn't build quality there. Uh, Speaking of the devil, build quality of automation is quite poor at the moment. Uh, the panel gaps are massive. Um, but this engine is 7k now. <laughs> well, that's expensive. That is really expensive for an engine. But acceptable. I mean, we don't have to pay for that foundry, uh, which is 30 million. And uh, that on a few cars, split over a few cars, the 55 we're producing per month, that would be bad. Very bad. Forecaster! Yay, forecast action. It's still a little awkward in that it's uh, behaving weirdly at times. But uh, here we have the labor cost multiplier, and we do want to be as efficient as possible. Um, okay, this is looking quite solid. Should we run with this? Yeah, this shouldn't affect anything really. No, it doesn't. Good. There we go. It only affects the end, which we don't care about. There. Okay. We don't care about that end. Although we do care a bit about the rest of the forecast. So, yeah, okay. We can go to 1.4. Um, that's all good. Now, pricing. We are producing them, supposedly... Oh, let's activate this one as well. So that we have the full scope of... Where what we need to break even. Um, we are producing them for 23 and 24k. As we saw, that is pretty solid. Uh, market difficulty, market awareness, budgets. 
Here, um, luxury 37. So probably want to aim for uh, low mid 30s. That would encapsulate almost all of the luxury buyers. And that means, let's see, monthly sales data, dealerships, blah, 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 demographic sizes. There it is. 4,200. And with our current um, awareness, that's 127. That's still way more than what we are building per month. And if we half that, then we still have access to more buyers in the luxury des demographic itself than there's access to. Not that they are going to buy it, right? Uh, but more people in there than what we can produce per month. So that's sounding reasonable. So let's aim for, let's aim for like 34,000. That still gives us a decent margin. So 34,000 and 35,000 because that one is a bit more expensive to produce. Supposedly, we still have competitiveness numbers that are quite high, which is very useful right at the start. And this is looking fancy. We're making a profit and not a short one. And this is going to be considered when you're trying to take out a loan, which we need to because we have no money on hand. So we need to make it look good to the investors or not the investors. The bank is our investor and that means that we now should have a nicely aligned project. This is all looking good. 28 million profits over five years. That will be considered by the bank when we are putting forward our uh, our plans and they will probably give us a decent in, uh, interest rate for that. And um, even when you're making negative, just negative, they're still going to give you a loan, but uh, it won't be quite as juicy. That is actually pretty good. 5.3%, that is very manageable. We can take out a maximum of 167% of the total costs of this project. And the total costs are 11.1 .1 million. So yeah, um, around 10 million, I would say then, is the absolute minimum starting capital you can have, which is way lower than it was in 4.0. So let's uh, tweak those numbers a bit. Um, let's go with 100 months to start with. And that is just 145,000 per month. It's so handy. This what, Was this in 4.0 already? Yeah, I, I think it was, right? But these numbers didn't change. Look at that. So like, if you take out less, you get better and better interest rates because they're like, yeah, I mean, this is peanuts. Uh, it, there's no risk in that. You have way more capital. And if you're failing, if you're declaring bankruptcy, then we take your plots. So <laughs> no harm done, right? Um, probably make a profit on that too. So you see that it is quite subtle in its increase there. And then, boom! It really kicks you in the nuts over there when they think that uh, he's going a little, um, a little too close to what they can afford. Um, a Ford, yes. So uh, that is, of course, ridiculous. Loan interest amount. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, we don't want that. So what I'm going to go for is taking out just above 100%. Maybe. Maybe 102% gives us a good loan interest rate and we sign it off. 102, why a little bit more? Well, that is to have some a little bit of cash on hands in case something happens. Uh, what would happen? Well, maybe we need to um, start marketing a little earlier or so. Um, marketing, of course, quite expensive, um, but I think we should be able to do that because today we changed the pricing balance of marketing starts you out quite cheap and then explodes up uh, in uh, in price to get to the higher levels. Anyway, um, I think we are ready here. 25-25, 5 5.37% 5 loan at 102% coverage of the project. That is excellent, yes. Okay, sign off, agreed. So now we see the block here and it started in today and it will end in 2 1948 and that's the um uh, this tool these tooltips are still fucked a little you have to aim for the background backing field 
then it shows up, but on the icon it doesn't. Weird, weird bug. But uh, yeah, that needs to be fixed. Um, okay, cool. So let's forward time and see what happens. So we're making a slight amount of money right there. And that is because we're taking out more loan than we need to cover the costs. This is not... Oh, well, no, this is actually pretty good. We're going into a big fucking recession, or mega depression even. Uh, but that means that probably in the one and a half years that are remaining, we should be out of it or on the way up again. So hopefully that works out. Let's see if we fail our first attempt here or not. But I think the car is good enough. Um, so company valuation is headed down. But what you're seeing here is that we are already starting some pre-orders. And currently we have five pre-orders on the books for the sedan and uh, three pre-orders on the books for the convertible. Oh, that was a good month there. Four and oh yeah, seven there. You can see it creep up. Yes, we're getting closer. So the closer you are to your actual production date, these buyers are looking at how long will it take until I get my car delivered? And that is f uh, feeding into how much they desire the car uh, right now to pre-order it. And of course the deposit size plays into that too. And here it's the case that, well, there are not that many on, on the books just yet. Now we are getting close to one month delay after production. Uh, and they are going to um, take that into account. They are going to look at that and like, ah, when I'm, are you going to get my car delivered? Well, yeah, let's, uh, it's March. And they're like, oh, it's one month too late. I hate you now. I'm going to call back in one month. Um, so yeah, for whatever reason. But no, this is uh, all fluid, so to say. There are no bullshit um, kind of steps in there or so. So um, let's see what happens. These numbers should further creep up. The economy is bouncing now. Hopefully it's not a dead cat bounce. We are so getting those deposits in already. That's why we are making a bit of a profit here. 55k. The rest is covered by the loan. And I think now is the time to start some marketing activities as well. So that we are not super late on that. Um, let's market towards prestige. That is very inexpensive. Uh, that is a little too inexpensive. Why is it so inexpensive? I think there was something forgotten here. Uh, that is supposed to be a factor 10 more expensive than that. I, I'm probably playing the, the wrong version or that was not changed today. Um, anyway, so yes, let's, let's pretend this is 10 times as expensive. So let's go with just level 1 here because otherwise we're playing, uh, paying 62k a month. And at level 10 that would be 15.9 million a month. Our company valuation is almost hitting zero at this point. Uh, let's continue. 1.5 million D, D plus. Okay, now we're starting to proper... Oh yeah, we're getting plenty of pre-orders. This will take a while to, uh, to produce, especially with new pre-orders coming in. Yeah, okay, this is looking pretty solid. So one more month of waiting, then one month more of waiting, and then the first month of production. So this is month 25. There we have it. Right, yes. Oh, that that demand is pretty high. Look at that. So now there's a significant wait time on it. This is still not quite working as intended. It's supposed to show you the negative uh, months of stock you have how much time it would take you, how many months it would take you to produce that um, at full factory capacity, at target shift capacity. That's the goal of what it should be showing. So minus 2.3 or whatever. Um, although in uh, here, 100, yeah, 197, that's, that's plenty of production. Uh, yes, so this is looking pretty solid so far. Do we want to start a facelift right away? Hmm. Uh, maybe. Do we have any uh, new tech avail available? Not really. Can we pay for the uh, for the engineering? Probably. So I'm just going to do a quick facelift where I'm just upping the quality for a few of those things that we had uh, already talked about and then up the production quality basically. Um, that should be fine. Oh yeah. 
They are really loving the stat increase here. Let's give it a plus two. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy bit more, um, more desirable than like proper premium interior. Can do another one of quality in the, in the steering as well, in the lack of power steering. Oof, yes. Now we're up to a desirability rating in that one of 748. I think it was 664 before. So that is quite the increase. And I think aiming for like 15 months or so should be good in this one. Desirabilities are through the roof, which is great. And the cost 3 million? Yeah, hurts, but um, I think we take it. I've also given the engine a little boost, some uh, quality in fuel system as well as its exhaust to make it more quiet. And we're going to pull off the retooling in a single month, of course, for the uh, small factory that is the, uh, the contract one and the uh, tiny factory that we are producing the car in. Ah, that is so annoying that it's forgetting the, the slots fixed price should just repopulate it with that. So I think it was 34 and 35. Let's go with that. And that should bring us back up into the green. Yes, this is looking good. Ready to be signed off. I hope we are not paying this per month. Uh, and we should be ready. That is a total cost of 5.5 million. We don't have that. Um, 14... <laughs> They don't cover anything. You can't take out a loan here, basically. Which is fine. We are signing it off anyway. All right, here we go. Uh, Pre-orders are being delivered. And we are already taking pre-orders for the next version as well. <laughs> uh, are we even able to deliver all of them? I don't know. Yeah, almost all. I mean, 116 and 29. Still two months worth of production a bit more and there we go new model is out uh, not new model uh, new trims are out and we are starting our delivery there so much interest in it yeah this is also looking good and it looks like we have turned the corner so there we go well, that is a successful start now you would have to continue successfully as well by soon designing a new model uh, which is quite expensive, so you need to make some more money with this one. But I hope you enjoyed this quick look at uh, this extreme start with the Light Campaign V4.1 in a very rough state at the moment, but playable, as you see. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time. <laughs>